In this video, I'm going to show you how to utilize VBA macros to automate repetitive tasks. And I know what you're thinking. Emma, don't we need to know how to write complex VBA code to do this? The answer is no. We can create macros without any VBA knowledge using the macro recorder. The macro recorder records every task you perform in Excel and automatically turns it into a macro. Let's take a look at how to use this tool. For example, here we have sales data by state that our boss sends us every week, and we have to create a report summarizing this data to present at the weekly team meeting. So every week, we need to take this data, format it, calculate the total sales, and visualize it with a map chart. Instead of repeating this every single week, we can record all these steps and then create the report using a keyboard shortcut. I know this sounds too good to be true, but it's possible thanks to the macro recorder tool. Before we are ready to use the macro recorder, we need to save the file as a macro enabled workbook and add the developer tab to our ribbon if it's not there already. To save this workbook as a macro enabled workbook, go to the file tab, select save as or save a copy, open the file dropdown, select macro enabled workbook, and then save the file. This step is so important because if you do not save the workbook as a macro enabled workbook, any macro you record will get deleted once you close the file. Next, we need to add the developer tab to our ribbon by right clicking the ribbon, selecting customize the ribbon, checking the box next to developer in the main tabs list, and then hitting OK. Now we can start recording a macro by opening the developer tab and selecting record macro. Once you hit record macro, the record macro dialog box will pop up, which is where you can name the macro, assign it a shortcut key, select where to store it, and add a description. I'm going to name this macro weekly sales report, and then assign it a keyboard shortcut using the shortcut key box. I'm going to enter the letter R for report, so every time I want to run this macro, I can just press Control R. I'm going to leave the rest as is, and then hit OK to start recording the macro. It's important to note that once you click OK, everything you do in the worksheet is recorded, so I recommend planning out each step before you start recording so that you don't accidentally record steps you don't need. We need to format the data, calculate the total sales, and insert a map chart, so let's get to it. First, I'm going to format the data headers by adding borders, folding them, and highlighting them blue. Next, I'm going to add borders to the remainder of the table by pressing Control shift down arrow to select the first column and then adding outside borders. It is important to always select data using the keyboard shortcut when recording a macro instead of using the mouse because it creates a dynamic range which enables the macro to automatically detect the bottom of the data table. If I were to select the first column using the mouse and then add the borders, it would hard code the data range in the macro and I would run into errors if I ran it on a data set with a different number of rows. I'm going to repeat this for the second column by pressing Control shift down arrow again, and then adding the borders. Now that the data is formatted, I'm going to calculate the total sales above the data set by entering total sales in cell B2, and then summing column C of the data using the sum function in cell C2. I'm also going to add some quick formatting to the total calculation to make it look nice, so I'm going to highlight the cells blue to match our data headers, bold the values, add outside borders to each cell, and our total sales calculation is complete. The last step is to insert the map chart. So I'm going to select the sales data by pressing Control shift right arrow, then down arrow to create a dynamic range, navigate to the Insert tab, open the Maps dropdown, and select Filled Map. Now that we've created our map chart, I'm going to move it to the top of the worksheet and then title the chart week 219 so that the time period is clear. Okay, this looks pretty good. One last thing I'm going to do is remove the worksheet's grid lines to clean up the report by going to the View tab and unchecking the box next to grid lines. Now that we've completed all the steps and are happy with the final report, we can end the recording by navigating back to the Developer tab and this time clicking Stop Recording instead of Record. Our macro is officially complete, so let's test it on our data. To run the macro, navigate to the Developer tab, click the Macros button, select the Weekly Report macro in the macro list, and then click Run, or you can just hit Control r because that's the shortcut key we assign the macro. 
I'm going to click Control R and our dashboard is complete. Fast forward one week, our boss sent us this new sales data set and it's time to create the report. It was a slow week and only a few states had sales, but this is not an issue because we utilize keyboard shortcuts to create dynamic ranges within the macro. So I'm going to go ahead and press Control R and the report is looking pretty good. The outside borders were adjusted to fit the smaller range and the chart's data range was automatically adjusted as well. The only thing that needs to be fixed is the chart's title. It is labeled week 219 after last week's report and we want it to be week 26 after this week. We can quickly fix this by adjusting the macro's code to set the chart's title equal to cell A1. To do this, open VBA by going to the Developer tab and selecting Visual Basic. Then select the macro under the Modules folder in the Project Explorer to open the macro's code. Here's the VBA code of all the steps we recorded to create the weekly report. We don't really need to know exactly how all this is working, but we do need to find the line of code that titles our chart. So I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of the code and look for the line that contains week 219. As you can see here, this is the line of code that names our chart because it contains week 219 in double quotations. Now we just have to replace this text string with cell A1. To insert a cell reference in VBA, type range followed by an open parenthesis, and then enter the cell reference in double quotations. We are referencing cell A1, so I'm going to enter A1 in double quotes, followed by a close parenthesis. Lastly, enter dot value to select the value, and that's it. This will now set our chart's title equal to the value in cell A1 instead of the text string. Let's close out of VBA and test this out. Fast forward one more week, we just received new sales data, and it's time to create the report. I'm going to press Control R to run our macro, and as you can see, the chart is now named week 34 after cell A1, and our report is complete. This is going to save us so much time from having to manually recreate this report every week. To wrap up, we learned how to use the macro recorder to create macros in Excel without knowing how to write VBA code. Macros can 10 times your productivity by turning repetitive tasks into the click of a button. If you found this video helpful, make sure to hit the thumbs up button below and subscribe to our channel for more.